Hi and welcome to Range and Country. I'm Lawrence and today with me is Mark Commercio. Hi there. Yes, you probably know me, hopefully, from uh, Air Gunner magazine and um, Gun Mart and various other publications. Um, but yeah, I'm here today with uh, Lawrence at Range and Country. We're showing off the brand new Air Arms XTI-50, aren't we? We are indeed, yes. <laughs> this is one of those highly yeah. sought after target rifles. Yeah. I know you know a lot more about it than I do, so I'm going to be the sort of new uh, first impressions and you're going to be the sort of, you, you've had a play with this already. Yeah, you? I've got to say, I, mean, I do have a bit of a vested interest in this gun. It's um, <laughs> I've been rather obsessed. Obviously, I'm a big Air Arms fan, but also... Um, known on the competition side, and I've been waiting for this gun. This is one of the most um, eagerly awaited um, air gun launches for for years. Obviously, you know, air, um, air arms have had a few excuses. I mean, sort of glo <laughs> global pandemic, threat of World War Three, but it's it's all true. You know, it's all caused problems, distribution in the background, etc. But the gun has finally um, they announced it at the last British shooting show back in February. It was actually going to happen, and it was very imminent. They're now hitting the shops, and this is my own gun that I've now um, taken delivery of. So, yeah. Yeah, this, um, this isn't even a press gun that you've had no, earlier or anything. No. This is your so own hard, you're not, hard... not wearing any sharp jewellery, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a little scratch in here. It's like, oh. <laughs> but, yeah, it's um, as you can see, it's a full-blown... This is a no-holes-barred um, match rifle that's been designed primarily for field target, um, really, when you look at the full-blown features, but this is also the I've gone for the technically the HFT version, and um, that there's there's a few there's only a few small minor differences, aren't there? Really on it? Yeah. So it's it's got the it's a shorter riser on the cheek piece for HFT because field target is very trendy now to set up your cheek piece high with high mounts, but you don't need that for HFT. Um, field target also has the ex extended but hook right at the bottom. You're not allowed that in HFT. So again, that obviously that, this is simplified. And um, so I'm trying to think of the other difference. Oh, of course, it's the spirit level, isn't it? Yeah. You've got to swing out. You know, every, they've tried to fit, think of every single feature right from the start, all in for the money. And you get a swing out um, wind indicator, but also for the field target version, there's actually a little bubble, isn't there, put into that. Um, you, they take that off on the HFT version, but otherwise there's not much difference. So yeah, it's um... <laughs> like you say, you've been, we've been eagerly awaiting this. I think we saw the first prototype actually at the British Shooting Show in 2020. Yeah, that's so right. So that was three years ago. Uh, yeah. Three years ago, at least we've been waiting for this rifle. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure you, as a shooter, definitely have I mean, been I, waiting even longer. I've not had it long. Um, I've been so keen to get out and and you know, check the accuracy. Of course, anyone who knows me, it's it's an obsession with all the competition. We're all after incredible tiny groups. Once you go to this level of rifle. The pressure's on to get those tiny yeah. groups. <laughs> but um, I was out yesterday. It was quite a windy day. It was the first day I've had a chance to properly test it. And I, I did get some five piece size groups at 50 yards out in the field. So despite the wind, um, yeah, it's proved itself. I've had 30 yards total ragged clusters. Um, yeah, so it's. It's um, it's good, but obviously it's all that nth degree. It's all about pushing, you know, refine, refining every feature and every element of a rifle. So, Mark, talk me through some of the specific features on this rifle. What has this got that the predecessor didn't have? What has this mm. got that maybe its uh, competitors didn't have? Right. Yeah. Well, I, I would say, to be honest, I think it's um, you know, I'm a huge Air Arms fan. They won't mind me saying. I think this is. The gun, the FTP um, 900, should have been basically because it, although the FTP looked fantastic and it had, if you remember, the, the two part, also you sold a few, didn't you? But the, um, the two part fluted barrel sure. shroud, but there was a bracket in the middle. It was all, it was overly complicated. And I always thought, my old friend Dave Willem, we always thought, for God's sake, air arms, we want floating barrels, no, no nonsense. This has got, there's actually, I'm, I'm very pleased when I've finally seen the finished gun on this because there is no contact with that barrel. It's utterly, properly floating. And a lot of guns say floating barrel, but there's still clamps and what have you. There's nothing on this. It is literally the barrel free floating and there's no contact there. And then at the end, you've got, yeah, I mean, starting at the front there, you've got an air stripper. And again, this is a new design. Everything's new on this gun. 
um, and it's it's an air stripper with an adjustable cone on it. Okay. So um, I've always liked the you know the theory on that. I mean, I've, I've tended to get into using a gun with a silencer because it's nice to have a quiet rifle. But the the, the science on this is is good, and it's um, it's a it's a great gadget to play with. But um, I mean, there's, there's I wanted to show some detail on that. Should we, should we do that now? But yeah, so if we just turn it over onto its side, yeah. then we'll it's, be able to pick it up on the top camera. So basically you've got the cone, um, if you know the principle of it, you've got an adjustable cone inside. So as the pellet exits the barrel, there's a, um, a, a gap uh, before it then enters the cone. Mm -hmm. That strips off all the, um, in theory, all the unstable air. Um, and you can actually adjust that gap. And minute, you can make minute changes and you're, in theory, you're, um, tuning, you're affecting the harmonics of the bow, you're tuning the bow, but um, you can also play around, play around with different pellets. It's a tiny little difference, but it's it's a great bit of kit to play with. And if you look underneath, I don't know how um, we we'll, how we'll want to show that to get the um, detail, but there's actually a, um, a scale underneath. Okay. So you can see, you can take... Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. We might need a little close-up for that in, in post, but, yeah, there's a little yeah. tiny scale that where you can... I can see that, and you can adjust it. Which is great. I've not seen that. I'm sure someone else may have done it, but I've not seen that on a on a production rifle um, before with that. So it's it's a yeah really neat feature. And, um, yeah, nicely done. So basically, you've got that to play with. You've yeah. got, um, obviously, the... So that is a good job you, you are here, actually, because I don't ever notice that. <laughs> I've never seen that. Like... Yeah, it's, it's very... I didn't realise they were going to do that, but it's it's very neat. So say so you've got the swing out, wind indicator, um, so literally you'll have a little bit of thread or feather or what have you. And that, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. It's not just a gimmick. When you're out in field target or... I was on sort of program from the field target days, but being allowed to have a, an indicator of some sort to show wind direction and strength is, is, is great. And it's, um, I feel a bit lost without it, so, <laughs> so that's handy. Yeah. But underneath that, obviously, you've got the, um, you've got the standard T-bar um, air arms valve, uh, which is sort of the safest on the market, really, because you can you literally lock the airline on it, yeah. which is great. And it's nice and simple as well. Um, you haven't got to get in from a side or undo a little cover and push, yeah. push the probe in from there and then this is it. T bar on done. Probes are nice from the point of view of speed, aren't they? But with high, the pipe we're dealing with very high pressure air on our air guns now, and yeah, you, you, to have a the probe, there's a risk it could always come out mid. And I don't, I don't like the idea of that. It's so safe and it just takes away all that worry, doesn't it? But yeah. Um, cool. What else have we got? I know it's this is regulated, isn't it? Is yeah, it? that's right. Yeah, they've got a new new design of regu I, I say, I mean, this is arguably um, one of the most tested guns ever because obviously because of that delay, the Air, Air Arms put out a series of prototypes, some, some in disguise and some that were known because it was some of their field target members. Um, so they've had prototypes out for a few years and they've taken feedback, they've been tweaking various things and um, the final... Pro, you know, the final production gun has been fine-tuned, taking into account all that feedback. So, yeah, it's, it's, um, it should be good. But um, my initial um, reaction is it, it bloody is good. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, other features, I mean, you've got um, the, the stuck with the dovetail mounting on here. Oh, so that's another difference, actually. When you get the field target version, you do get a raised, um, you get that massive raised scope rail, don't you? Yeah. And that, that's probably another inch and a quarter or something on the top. It's all adding weight, mind you. I mean, I've, I've got to, you know, I'm not fit enough. I don't want a gun that weighs weighs um, so much. And all those bit extra bits are going to add weight. Um, but once you start to take all those bits off, these are actually, I was very pleased, this comes in at less than 10 pounds in weight, which was okay. markedly, when you think the FTP 900 was 11 pounds before you started, you know. Do you know what that is um, in the uh, 21st oh, century? Oh, God, speak? I'm... Um, <laughs> Um, well, well, no, I, I can't tell you offhand, but... Um, <laughs> that's we, fine, I'm we'll, sure we'll... we'll uh, we can show our, that. Our editors will put that up, yeah, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> um, of course, this is side lever um, action, so really refined side lever action, and um, di that means direct feeding into the barrel with your pellet. And although um, the way they do the chambering it's not like the old pro target where you can actually feel the pellet going into the rifling. So you're slightly lacking that feedback. But they even with the the EV2, um, they did away with that. And um, but obviously you can't fault the results. So yeah, but you've got direct feed into there. You'll pick up some um, feedback from how how the pellet fits in the breech. 
Um, but yeah, the, the, the side lever is um, beautifully engineered. You know, it's a, it's a, it's all very nicely done. Yeah, a full blown match trigger, obviously. I mean, you'd expect that on something like this, wouldn't you? Yeah, but... definitely. And and that again, all the, I mean, this, obviously these are, um, you know, it's a significant outlay when you think of the, you know, the, the RRP on these things. But um, several hundred pounds goes into that trigger unit alone. There's a, it's a whole cassette with quite a few components in there. And we compare that against a basic budget Springer with sort of literally two sears and the trigger blade. Um, you can see the technology and the refinement and, and all that engineering costs money. So yeah, but because of that, um, you can adjust the trigger right down. I mean, I'm obsessed with triggers. I'll have this down to sort of two ounces, two ounce pull. Uh, if you want that ingrained, that's a, what is it, 28 grams to an ounce or whatever. So 50, it's around 50 grams, isn't it? But so two ounces. Breathe yeah. on it and it goes off. Sort yeah, of thing. yeah, definitely. And, and the blade is fully adjustable. The position's fully adjustable. In the first stage letter, all those, you know, it's, it's fully refined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Um, otherwise, the, I mean, just going on the, the technical features, obviously there's a manometer on the side, you know, the gauge on the side of the action. Yep. So you've got a gauge nicely positioned there for safety wise. That's your residual main cylinder pressure um, in the, in the uh, you know, that you've got left. So again, obviously you need to keep a check. With this, I mean, shot count wise, um, this it, this is the specification is about a hundred shots, and um, yeah, we've had what nine feet per second variation on this over the hundred shots. So it's a fully regulated action. That's in, that's top notch figures. You won't get better. You'll never notice a difference on your trajectory with that. Um, I mean, nine feet per second. That's impressive, yeah. isn't it? So this is one seven seven. So it's about seven hundred and eighty feet per second. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so I think the um, it's less one less than one percent, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's um, that I think it was eleven point four, roughly average of eleven point four foot pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know it's in the perfect uh, position. Um, going to the end, I mean, yeah, obviously this is a match um, stock, so you've got. Full, I, I think Nick Jenkinson was probably involved with this again, who's the three times world champion field target, knows his stuff. And um, you've got a lovely, full, fully contoured grip, full blown. So you've got your thumb up. You've actually got two positions for thumb up. So if you totally relaxed your, fit, your thumb, you could have it just sitting on the side of the grip or go to the back of the grip either way. And a full 90 degree drop down. So you've got a full target. Um, proper control and your hands in the right exactly the right place for the trigger you know it's but add to that you've got all the adjustable elements on this which is um there's a lot you know there's a, there's a lot of features <laughs> you'd expect that this sort of thing to be fully adjustable isn't it yeah that's it um so i mean just down to the basics now you've got a, a, a palm shelf here i don't know if you can see that pick that out you've got it's quite, quite a wide lip on it it's about obviously your hand will literally sit on there and that it just again assures a totally consistent grip. Now, how they've done it this time around is they've actually added two spacers and the final plate. So obviously you've got um, what would that be three three different depths of that if you want to add those on. There's a fair bit of weight in those. I mean, I'm already thinking I won't be using any of them because I, I want to get you know minimise the weight. They're but, quite solid metal pieces, weren't they? Yeah. These little black inserts that are in here. Definitely. They're all, it's almost, they've done it almost as if they're counterweights, aren't they? So you can actually use it as a counterweight system. But yeah, beautifully engineered. It works brilliantly. Um, in HFT, where we want to pair things down and you want to worry about contact, um, I don't think you allow the pistol grip on the floor. I can't remember that now. But anyway, you can take this, it, literally you can fine-tune the grip basically yeah. which is brilliant um, adjustable and they've got these quick adjusters on this this is all different to the you know they, they've, they've just progressed and they've just um, as I say they've got the design spot on quick adjusters for your cheek height so if you're in the if you especially for field target obviously for HFT where you're not allowed to touch it mid shoot that wouldn't apply but in field target you can adjust anything for every target um, you've got quick adjusters for your height but the cheek piece is fully adjustable, literally for the angle. They're on ball joints at the top. Um, so you can twist it, you can tilt it. Yeah, this is you it. Can put so it in all sorts of funny shapes. It's, some, it's absolutely amazing. And likewise with the um, the butt hook assembly at the back, you've got a quick adjuster there, so you can just pull the lever and slide it up and down. But you've got all different elements. There's extra elements supplied. 
with the gun so you can play around and get that whole configuration just to fit your shoulder you know it's yeah it's pretty impressive yeah brilliant. that sounds pretty extensive um it there certainly is, comes with a lot it does there is a, a major feature of the hamster of course that we better just show oh yeah this it's is so tucked it's so well engineered it's so tucked up there that this hamster i hadn't even <laughs> hadn't even come yeah, sprung to mind it's a major part of this gun and um yeah there's a lot of design work gone into it you can see you see, they obviously to lose weight, they've drilled right across it, so they've lost a load of weight on there. There's um, yeah, all those holes cut out, and all that's losing this, uh, aluminium along the way. But now with this, you've got a side button, and you press that, and then literally you've got this hole. If anyone's familiar with Rowan Engineering, when they brought out and it was a, an add-on accessory um, for field target, and it was literally it was very similar to this. But Air Arms have decided to offer this totally from scratch. And the actual configurations, the, what you can do with it. I mean, imagine if you're in field target and you're aiming at a, up a tree, you can just quickly drop that down and you're, it's astonishing. And the engineering quality, I mean, it's, it's breathtaking. It's a fantastic piece of work. So literally you can you know, stop and start at any point. All you do is press that button, yeah. put it to where you need to. And this is Incredible. this is genuinely my first time seeing seeing this rifle and seeing the adjustability. That's amazing. And it? seeing the hamsters. <laughs> that's phenomenal. Build yeah. quality in there, the engineering that's gone into that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, the rifles aren't cheap, are they? But no. you can feel where the money has gone. Yeah. This is it's about as advanced as as air guns get, isn't it? This is the you know it's it's utterly amazing. So yeah, you've got all that refinement. And uh, of course, now the only, this is the thing with field target, you're unlimited, you can mess around and um, adjust the gun for every shot. But in HFT, you you know, exactly. the, the rules are, um, the whole point of it is the rules are, you're not allowed to touch anything once you've started the course. So, and, and there's also in field, uh, in HFT, um, a restriction. I think that the distance between the center of the barrel and the base of that, um, the stock, is 150 mil. So um, what you do is you'd set this up. Um, it'd probably be somewhere about, I don't know, a bit about there. Probably be about there. And then I believe they've designed in locks on this. So then you would leave it there. You'd lock it, and um, you know that would. And that's how you'd leave it for the duration of the shoot. But yeah, it's it's just fantastic. Can't argue with that. No. Should we do some shooting? Okay. <laughs> Okay, here we are, all set up, ready to shoot. Let's get going. Okay, pressure's on. This is four years in the making. Not bad so far. Just do one more. Yes, not quite as good as I'd like, but this is what I should probably say is. The rifle's brilliant, and I'm sure you're brilliant. <laughs> the lights don't help because they're behind us and they're sort of getting into the back of the scope. So I'm giving you an excuse. You are, yeah. <laughs> I really should have shrouded the back of this. Um, but yeah, it's, but anyway, it's... Um, but I mean, clearly it will do 
Um, same hole groups. We had three shots that were there for, for through the same hole. Um, yeah, let's get ready for closing thoughts. So there we have it, the brand new XTI 50, all singing, all dancing, target rifle, HFT or FT, absolutely brilliant. We we both love it here. Um, you're especially emotional about it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, um, it's how far you want to push an air gun. And, you know, it, of all seven air guns, you can get into it at any level, enjoy it at any level. But if you want to push things to the limit, um, you know, it's uh, this. This is this, this is gun's gonna. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is if you want to win. It's all about winning tournaments and doing well in competition. This is built to do well in competition, and you know, smooth the path all the way through. Yeah, cracking piece of gun, brilliantly made. And um, the, my my initial testing of it. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. It's Brilliant, great Brilliant. stuff. Well, on that note, thank you very much for yeah. watching. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers, see you then.